Hey Shogi fans, uh, welcome back to Shogi Corner. I wish I could be excited about this video today, but I actually have some pretty terrible news to share with you. Uh, according to the Japan Shogi Association website, uh, the president of the Japan Shogi Association, Kunio Yonenaga, uh, just passed away this morning from uh, prostate cancer uh, at the age of 69. Yonenaga was one of the greatest players of his time, uh, dominating the title scene along with uh, Makoto Nakahara. And uh, he qualified for the permanent Kisei title. He was a fantastic man and has been running uh, the Japan Shogi Association for the past few years and has loved the idea of international shogi promotion. So today I'm going to make this video a tribute to him. So we're going to cover one of his games today. Of course, I can't share a great Yonanaga game without his permanent rival, Makoto Nakahara is Sente, and of course, Kunio Yonanaga is Bote. Uh, this is a game from the 23rd 10th Dan title match, played in 1985. It started on 7-6, pawn 8-4, silver 6-8. So, they're going to be playing a Yagura game. Pawn 3-4, uh, they used the old Joseki from their time, uh, Silver 7-7. Seven, seven. Nowadays, of course, you would play uh, Silver or Pawn 6-6, six, six, right? So, Silver 7-7. Seven, seven. And they continued developing Silver 6-2, Silver 4-8, Silver 4-2, and then uh, another sign that it's the classic Yagura Joseki. Gold 7 8. Normally, you wouldn't play this so early nowadays uh, because of the possibility of Yagura rapid attack by Gote. But he played gold 7 8, center pawns, and yeah, Gote goes for uh, Yagura 2. So they castle. And here. Instead of just playing silver 3-3, three, three, he goes pawn 6-4. The reason for this is that the rook's pawn hasn't been pushed, so there's no urgency to castle. So he can start thinking about attacking now. Now Nakahara decides that he needs to stop playing so passively, because if he would just, you know, sorry, if he would just castle with these kinds of moves, it would give Yonanaga a huge advantage because he could get his attack developed before Nakahara had his attack developed. So he brings the knight down, and he continues pushing the rook's pawn, offering or getting ready to offer a pawn exchange. Uh, here, if he just defends on 3-3, three, three, it would be too passive, and it would go into a regular game. Since he was already being aggressive on this side, he chooses to go straight for the attack right now, giving up that uh, pawn exchange with pawn 6-5. Now, if Nakahara would take it, then Yonanaga would push pawn 8-6, pawn takes, and then go after the silver. Silver runs, and he takes this pawn, and here, he's aiming for this pawn push. Uh, let's see. Like this, and pawn drop 7-7. Seven, seven. So, Nakahara finds that line a bit uncomfortable. So, instead, he brings the silver up to 4 or the bishop up to 4-6, pinning the knight to the rook. So, Gote takes the pawn, Gold takes, making sure he's still defending the 8th file. And now from here, Nakahara's king is still on 6-9, and uh, Yonanaga's castle is pretty solid. Uh, there's not many attackers, so he chooses to play silver 5-3 from the left. 
uh, he's been very aggressive here, and the king still hasn't castled, so now he can bring this silver in for the attack. So Nakahara pushes pawn 3-6, making room for the bishop to come down to 3-7 if it's attacked. And Yonanaga moves the rook to 8-3, freeing the knight from the pin by the bishop. Silver 5-7, adding another defender to the center, and pawn drop 6-4, which again removes the skewer on the knight. So the knight can come over here anytime, uh, maybe a pawn push. King castles, and uh, Yorinaga pushes the fourth file pawn, getting ready to attack the bishop. So Nakahara goes for a uh, pawn exchange. Pawn takes, rook takes, pawn drop, and uh, rook 2-8. Uh, going for this pawn isn't very good, right? Because he doesn't have much room to escape. Uh, so the silver comes down from 6-2, adding another attacker to the center. And now, since Yonanaga has no pawns in hand, Nakahara chooses this time to start attacking. Uh, Yonanaga makes a counterattack, attacking on the bishop's head, bishop runs, and the knight comes down to 6-5, forking the two silvers. So gold takes, pawn takes and the pawn takes on 5-4. Um, because the bishop is now attacking the lance, he moves the silver to 6-4. And the pawn on 4-5 is floating, so silver 5-6, attacking that pawn. Yonanaga makes a pawn sack on the 8th pile, and then pawn 1-4, uh, defending against this knight drop. Since uh, if he was able to do that, then there's no way to stop the rook from promoting. So, silver takes, and uh, gold drop on 4-3 creates a really good uh, thick castle right here, since the attack will probably be coming along here, you know, with the pawn attacking here, the silver is going to come up, and uh, it's like the snow roof castle except with the gold here. So really good defense. And here, uh, Yoranaga was thinking for a while, and couldn't find a good move, so he pushed the pawn on 9-6, asking Yonanaga what he was going to do from here. So after this move, uh, Yonanaga begins to attack on the king's head. Pawn takes. Uh, this opens up a uh, possibility of a pawn drop on 7-6 in the future, uh, making the silver come directly forward since it won't be able to go back. And here he moves the knight to 3-3, attacking the silver. Nakahara ignores that attack and just defends, uh, supporting the silver by a pawn. And Yonanaga keeps going for it. Silver 5-5, five, five, attacking the pawn and also showing the possibility of coming down to here. Uh, Nakahara plays knight to 1-6, preparing to attack along the third file, maybe by dropping a pawn here. And bishop 1-3, attacking this pawn right here with two pieces, getting ready to capture the bishop, and also he's aiming directly at the king. So king castles and silver takes, killing the bishop. Nakata drops a pawn on 2-4, blocking the bishop's path. So Yonanaga takes the bishop, uh, declines the probe motion, showing the possibility of coming back to the fourth pile, maybe attacking the silver or coming even further back to attack along here, but Nakahara takes it with the uh, knight, and like I said, pawn drop on 7-6. If he takes it, there's going to be this bishop drop on 5-5, five, five, forking the knight and the king, so the king will have to run because he can't drop a pawn here, and then bishop promotes on 3-7, and it seems really bad for Nakahara. So instead of taking it, he promotes the pawn to 2-3. Uh, forking the gold and the bishop, uh, and it's not a check, so Yonanaga makes a check, taking the silver, so knight takes and gold takes on 2-3, rook promotes, and silver drop, 3-2, uh, this kicks the dragon back because he has nowhere to go, dragon 2-8, and now uh, Yonanaga has the initiative, and the silver is floating, 
Uh, well, not floating, but uh, he can take it, and it's going to be a material win for him after knight takes. And then, silver drop on 6-9. Uh, if he runs, then the bishop will promote here, and bishop drop 4-7, forks the dragon and the king so he doesn't want to run so he blocks it knight drop 2-4 also making this uh, joining knight attack so Yorinaga takes the gold king takes and pawn drop on 7-6 uh, aiming to take it and drop the bishop on 5-5 five five again so, knight takes the silver, king takes, and knight 2-4 again, blocking the bishop, and also checking the king. King runs, and uh, pawn promotion to 5-3. Uh, he knows that the king is going to be uh, forked with the dragon, but if he saves the dragon, he's going to lose too many moves, so he decides to make a faster attack. So, now Yarnaga goes for the fork, Bishop drop. Pawn drop, and he takes the dragon. Now, Nakahara drops a silver on 3-2. King has to run, and then Bishop promotes, or silver promotes to 4-3. If he takes it, then it's going to be a mate. Gold drop, and gold drop 3-2 mate. And he can't ignore it, right? It's going to be a mate. Like this. So he can't ignore it, it's a threat mate. But actually, Nakahara is actually in a threat mate here. So rook drops 4 to 7, silver drop, gold drop on 8 7. Uh, this is a very important test sheet for you to learn. Uh, if you're making an attack in the promotion zone with your rook, uh, dropping a gold or a rook in this kind of situation will make it possible for your rook to promote. So king takes, rook promotes, gold drop. Uh, if you were to just drop a silver here, uh, the king would be able to get away. Uh, you know, there's no mate here. Even if he makes this, which is a threat mate, this is a forced mate. So instead, sorry, he sacrifices his rook here. Uh, he can't run because of Silver Drop, so he takes it, and Knight Drop 7-4. Seeing this move, Nakahara resigned. The mating moves are pretty long. Uh, if he takes the Knight, then Horse checks, Knight blocks, Horse sack, King takes, Dragon takes the gold, Silver Drop, Silver Drop, King runs, then dragon check, silver blocks, pawn drop, king takes, dragon takes, has to block, and gold drop, 7-2 mates. What else? If he runs to 8-5, then silver drop 9-4, king runs, and knight drop 7-2. Don't forget this horse's influence. And if he runs to 8-7, then silver drop 7-6, king runs to 9-8. Knight drop, king runs, pawn drop, dragon takes, and the square gap dragon check. And checkmate. So, this was the seventh game, so after this game, Yonanaga took the tenth Don title for the first time. So, we're all gonna miss Yonanaga. Uh, he was a great shogi player and a great president of the Japan Shogi Association. Um, rest in peace, Yonanaga-sensei. We'll all be praying for you. Um... If you liked this video, uh, make sure you like and subscribe. If you had any questions or comments, make sure you leave them in the comment section underneath the video. 
and uh, we'll see you next time, hopefully on a cheerier note. Thanks, bye.